The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing the man and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel mentions today that Jesus, while in Capernaum on the Sabbath, goes to the synagogue and in other places mentions the same thing as was his habit. And it's something that is something for us to always recognize in our lives, so many of us who come to Mass, but come to Mass on the Sabbath, on the Sunday, the day of the rising of the Lord. But the rhythm of our life and the thing that takes place in our lives of the seven days and the seventh day, the first day of the week in many ways, is the day in which we give our devotion to the Lord and come and offer our praise and in our honor to God. And it's something that's crept into our culture in many ways. Our culture has been formed by the gospel itself. It's been weakened at times and is being weakened even now. But this Sabbath is still with us and the Lord's Day, Sunday, still, still sacred for us. And the day in the midst of all the anxieties and all the responsibilities of our lives, we leave those things and we come to the Lord and offer our prayers and especially our praise to him. It's something to recognize that it's inherent to our faith from the very beginning, following the example of the Lord, following his tradition and customs as a Jew, but comes in the midst of the community and gathers wherever he's traveling and wherever he is. It's good for us just to recognize that, something that is given to us as a discipline in our church, but something that gives rhythm to our lives and has left an imprint on our culture, which is enormously strong and still with us today, and the week itself so important for us. Paul's wonderful lesson at the beginning gives sort of a tempering of this. He says, you know the many, many, many anxieties that we have in our lives. The anxieties of those who work in the world, the anxieties of those who are parents, the anxieties of those who are married, and the obligations they have to one another, and so many things that are part of our lives that we don't discredit and are part of something which is our cross too, but the working of human life. And at the end of that, then we come to the Lord, and what we do on this Sunday gives a different perspective to everything that takes place in our lives. And the anxieties are there because we know they're inherent in human life to have anxieties like this. But he exhorts us, don't be anxious above all about the important things. And when we come to the Lord, give everything to the Lord, and give our praise and honor to him, and let that color, and also then 
mitigate the anxieties which are part of the world that we'll know we'll measure up and deal with tomorrow morning. It's a lovely rhythm. It's something good for us to recognize, especially at the beginning of this year, to see how important it is for our lives. And we know how much we miss it when we miss a Sunday and something isn't there for ourselves to be with the Lord. We have a wonderful, really remarkable first episode of Jesus, the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. And it's situated for us lovely because it's at the very beginning. Jesus really has no teaching that he gives. We don't hear about what he says. And we'll hear about what he says for the rest of the year as we follow the episodes and the encounters and the story that Mark tells to us and the words that Jesus proclaims and teaches which go to our heart. But today he goes to Capernaum on the Sabbath day and follows the rituals and traditions of his people and on the Sabbath day, they read the scriptures and someone then commented. And often if someone was visiting, they'd ask the visitor to comment on what was written in what was read for the community. And Jesus obviously has that task today. And he steps up and he begins to teach. And immediately, as the gospel says, there's stark realities here of blacks and whites. Immediately, they recognize that something different is taking place. This is one who is not teaching as one who is interpreting what has taken place. This is one who is teaching with a new doctrine and a new teaching, and he himself is the authority of it. He's not saying that so-and-so said this or whatever this person commented and said this. He says, I say this. And immediately, there's something about this encounter that Jesus has with the people that amazes them. And this even before his encounter with the evil spirit, with the one who's possessed. And just for us to recognize that, there's something deep here that those who encounter Jesus, as we've mentioned before, interpret and see a transcendence which no other human being has ever had. People see Jesus and hear his words and in a way peer into eternity because of who he is, fully human and fully divine. And no other person has the authority to teach as Jesus does. And no one else bears the fruits that Jesus does in the way and what he says. And remarkably, as again, as I say, we don't hear what the teaching is today. All that the gospel reading gives to us is the effect that it has on the people. The fruit that it bears right away in the disposition that changes within them. They come to the synagogue hearing the scriptures of the Old Testament read to them and waiting for someone to interpret it for them. And instead, as they say, they receive a new teaching, a new doctrine is given to them, and one that has authority. And then almost as a compliment to that authority, he rebukes the person and the one who's possessed, who identifies him in a way, we'll speak to him just in a minute, and he rebukes him and casts him out. And then they say, what is taking place here? And it's good for us at the beginning of the gospel, the beginning of the year, because very quickly our Lenten season will be upon us, just to establish this sense of what it is and who we listen to when we come to the Mass. Because the authority that this experience gives to those people is the authority we wish to awaken in our hearts. Not in the authority of the people of the church, but the authority that the Christ has then transplanted and transmitted into his church in the Eucharist that we celebrate and in the Gospels that we proclaim. And that is the thing that we give authority to and will reflect a poor more upon on Wednesday evening. We give authority those things at the end of the week and all of its anxieties to come to the one so that we can hear the proclamation of the Gospel for us and to receive the body and the blood of the Lord in the Eucharist that we share. And this is the same thing that we then awaken that sense of authority that we give to Christ and we see the amazing things that he does in our lives and then the anxiety of so many things in our world that we have can drift away because all I know that in coming on Mass on Sunday and giving my authority to the Lord, I don't need to worry about this and this and this and whether this is true or this isn't true. Here is the authority and faith that registers in my heart. And then it starts to give centering and a focus to everything else that takes place during the week. The other wonderful aspect, but something that we see and we have to recognize, is that as Jesus begins his missionary and his ministry in the world, there is opposition 
immediately. And this is something that we'll carry through in all the Gospels, and especially in Mark, right to the end to his crucifixion. And from the very beginning, as Christ enters into the world and begins to proclaim in its ministry, immediately there is a reaction. And we'll speak of that more on Wednesday night too. But it's good for us to recognize this. And it's a reaction that is coming not from this world, but from this other world that also has its place here. The world of the evil one who exists in the world herself. And in this poor person who's possessed, this evil spirit speaks the truth of who Jesus is and misinterprets again, either through deception, have you come to destroy us, when in fact he has come to save us. And this is something just for us to say, we'll see this theme, but this reality, all the way through the ministry and teaching of Jesus. There will be opposition. There will be people who yell and scream. There will be evil spirits that make themselves known and try to disrupt. And Jesus, well aware of this, recognizes the paradox of his mission is that he gives himself to those powers so that he can destroy them for ourselves. And they still exist for us, and they still exist in the anxieties and the things that take place in our hearts. But then we see that Jesus, with the message and the power that he has given by the Father, leaves this with us in the church, and that this is our salvation itself. And to see these themes at the very beginning, then we'll listen to the words of Jesus and what he says and what he preaches, and to allow those words, as we spoke of the other evening last week or the week before, to let those things reside in our hearts and transform us as well. But for today, just to see, I put my authority here, and it gives a rhythm to my life, and we'll reflect upon that more and more. But this is something that I come to church not wondering, not questioning, not giving all these ideas, but to let those anxieties especially dissipate from my mind and come with a simple, simple thing, listening to Jesus as he speaks through the proclamation of the gospel, receiving his body and blood and the ministry of cleansing that the church gives to us, and then to go out into the world and the ministry and vocation that is given to us, to labor in the world, in the vineyard of the Lord, and to come back Wednesday, next Sunday itself, to be refreshed and recreated in the ministry and the teaching of Jesus.